Well, hello there. This video is about the five, count them, five worst festivals of all time. Just a quick note, I'm not doing festivals where people die, that's just a bit, yeah. Everybody seems to agree on the obvious five, but frankly, they're pretty naff ones. And they're centered around America. But I found five which I think are generally pretty bad. Let's get the first one and the most obvious one out of the way first, the Fire Festival. Yeah. Now you've probably seen the Netflix movie or the Hulu movie. I'm about to go to Fire Festival. Could be amazing. Could be a disaster. If so, you probably know most of it. Well, not necessarily, because I've watched them both. Well, let's just go back to what Fire Festival was. It was in 2017, just before the pandemic, so they couldn't even blame that. And what happened was, the two guys, Billy McFarlane, who's described on Wikipedia as a con man, but uh, anyway, we'll, we'll come to that, and the rapper, Ja Rule, better known as Jeffrey Atkins, who decided to run a festival for rich people on an island in the Caribbean. The actual experience exceeds all expectations. So they searched for an island and they found one which had been owned by a Medellin, which is not how you pronounce it, I'm sure, cartel, who, as you know, is um, Pablo Escobar's um, little outfit in Colombia. And they owned it and they leased it to these two entrepreneurs on the understanding they didn't mention it was anything to do with the drug cartel. And of course, the first thing they did was they actually mentioned it in all their advertising, which of course got the um, bad guys a bit riled up. And so the other bad guys, the con artists, as Wikipedia called them, had to find somewhere else. And they eventually found somewhere that wasn't even an island. It was the edge of, of Bermuda, which was like an old abandoned resort. So they, it wasn't an island but they pretended it was an island and they still carried on with this Pablo Escobar advertising which I think is a bit risky so what happened was they basically got loads of um, influencers as they're called paid them loads of money this is where they're really good these guys were really good Billy McFarlane was really good at influencing people the most insane festival the world has ever seen so we got all these rich halfwits to pay thousands to go to this mythical festival with all these acts that frankly I've never heard of any of them but there again I'm not really the target audience, a 68-year-old British man. Just basically didn't have enough time to get it all together. I don't think they really set out to take the money off people, because if they did, they could have done it a lot better than what they did, because they spent millions where they wasted millions on stuff. I mean, but stupidly, they made the crucial mistake is when something needed £5 million, say, they would spend a million pounds. And that sort of thing was like, Catering. They're promising all these rich influencers exotic food, and what they actually got was a load of sandwiches. Sounds a bit like Subway to me, but anyway, let's just cut to the chase. Um, it all went horribly wrong. People turned up, they didn't have luxury apartments to stay in. They had tents, which are like refugee tents. It wasn't good. They're never going to do it. They should have just postponed it, cancelled it or whatever, and just run it the next year, which is what everybody seemed to want them to do. They were inexperienced. Their hut spa, which I think was fueled a bit by um, chemicals. And Billy McFarlane was sentenced to six years in jail for a federal offence of wire fraud. Now, in the States, I don't know if you know American law, but it's okay to con people as long as you don't do it over state lines. I don't know how that works, but there you go. So it was all a bit horrible. All the rich people lost a lot of money and didn't have a very good time. And that, I think, is what we can take out of this, is if you're going to do a fraud and if you're going to run a dodgy festival, don't do it to rich people, because rich, rich people absolutely hate you taking their money off them and they have the means to do something about it. So if, so if you're going to run a dodgy festival, don't invite rich people people that's my advice anyway so number four is another obvious one which is the Woodstock festival not the big one the famous one but the 1999 one 
which ended up, well, let's just talk about that now, shall we? Well, Woodstock 1999 was a disaster, mainly because the original Woodstock in 1969 was all about peace and love. And it seems to me, looking at the bill and watching the footage of it, that Woodstock 1999 was all about hate. It was angry, it was horrible. And the organizers were just, well, they, they roped in some of the original people from 69, but I think they got had minor roles. It was just basically a corporate, let's make as much money as we can sort of thing, very cynical. Now, I've just read about all the bands they'd originally booked who couldn't make it for various reasons, including, believe it or not, Al Green as well, which is, I just can't see Al Green fitting in with Limp Biscuit. It was just the wrong time. 1999 was a pretty bad time. And it was just horrible. There were women being raped and it was just horrible. Anyway, let's not go on about it because I don't want to, want, to, want to talk about it anymore. Let's just think about peace and love, shall we? Yes. Anyway, what's next then? What's the next most horrible festival ever? That's the Block Festival in 2000. 2012, which was in good old London. We can do it. We can do these festivals just as bad as the Yanks, can't we? Yes, we can. Once again, this is like a case of like the promoters promising too much. In this case, one of the things they promised, I shouldn't laugh, should I? That was too much was they promised late night buses from the festival site, which is in the Pleasure Gardens in East Dockland area, going to, they were promised buses going to Liverpool Street and they only went to Canning Town. <gasps> And that created a bit of a riot. This was just like, everything just went wrong, really. The, the bars were out of beer at 10.30 on the Friday night. It's supposed to be a weekend festival. Um, the sound, apparently, was appalling. There were various stages, and you could hear everything that was going on on every stage, everywhere. People couldn't get to the main stage. <laughs> And it was just like a total fiasco. Orbital were due to headline on the Saturday, but by then, the whole thing had been called off, so. Again, another disaster. These are not my sort of festivals. Now we're going to go to the festival I was at. And let's get this straight. People talk about the Glastonbury floods of 2000, what were you, 2006, 2007, when it was. Pfft, I was there for that as well. The worst year for floods was 1997, believe me, because the organizers were in no way prepared for it. And it just rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. And to make it worse, even though we were actually on a farm, they were supposed to be bringing around straw, but it, you know, like bales of straw and bales of hay, just to, just to um, soak up the water. But it took, I mean, I had a bookstore in one of the markets there, I think, I can't remember now, Market Eye or something. I mean, and I think we got like one bale of straw per day, basically, for like 30 stalls. So it hardly did the job. Plus, well, I mean, like, my books were getting like totally trash. People were coming, people were just covered in mud. I mean, absolutely, you know what people are like, get a bit of a drink, a bit, a few drugs maybe, and they roll in the mud and they fall into holes. I mean, there was like sinkholes, literally, you could fall into. I mean, I was just covered in mud as well. Everyone was just covered in mud, and all my books were just covered in mud. And, it, and afterwards, I, th I think we just threw away probably half of the books, so it cost me an absolute fortune, this, but, it was Glastonbury. <laughs> so, what's the worst, or the biggest, or the, what do I deem is the number one worst festival of all time? Pretty obvious, isn't it? Can't you tell? This is one that rarely makes it into the um, into these kind of things because most people have got no imagination and they can't think back this far. It's not in the 1930s or anything like that, or 1940. Well, the worst music festival of all time, you've got to go back to 1972. And not many people know about this because it's got various names. It was originally called the Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival because well, it's a bit of a long story, but it took place near Evansville in Indiana, which coincidentally is where my friend Gina Washington was born. Not a lot of people know that. Hmm. But, because back then, 1972, especially in that part of the United States, which is reasonably near Chicago, but, but quite a long way, if you see what I mean, to try and make it seem less um, hippie 
aggressive thing that they called it an ice cream festival. And they had quite a few people on, including Ike and Tina Turner and I can't remember who else, but that was the first one, which is a one-day event. And then they planned to do a three-day event at a local racetrack, but being in the area, the local um, bigwigs decided to do injunctions to stop them from doing it in this racetrack, even though there were lots of facilities there and they were building like 600 toilets and stuff like that. So they had to move it to this um, farm site which was called Bull Island, and so the festival became the Bull Island Festival. And they were, and they had a very good lineup. and here it is. Yes, a lot of British acts on there, which is what happened at the time, because it was the first British invasion. Well, was it the first? Well, that was 63, wasn't it? Well, second British invasion. So a lot of the famous acts from the from UK were playing, or supposed to be playing, and they planned for 55,000 people, and they had this site, and it was like good, and they were arranging 55,000 people. And unfortunately, I think 300,000, I think it's 275,000 they worked out in the end turned up. But unfortunately, only 55,000 of them paid. But this is where it all starts to get a bit complicated. I won't go into all the details about it, because it's a bit um, boring and involved, not interested, are you? No. But just the highlights, instead of having all these toilets, they had six toilets, six toilets for 275,000 people. So you can imagine how that went down. They had one food truck, which apparently put the prices up after the first day and was charging something like $10. Or, was it $10 or $20 for a hot dog, which in today's cash is something like 50 quid. They had no water. It was just a complete nightmare. A lot of the acts turned up, especially the British acts like Rod Stewart and the Faces and um, I think um, Black Sabbath, typically. And because there were lots of people there and their contract says it's 55,000, they wanted more money. And of course, these people hadn't paid to get in. The organisers were having a bit of a hard time, as you can well imagine. It was on the border of two states. So I, I believe it was just in Indiana. Oh, I don't know. It's so, Complicated. But long story short, it all was horrible, a disaster, there were riots, half the bands didn't play. By the end, the food truck had obviously been burnt down, a cow had been slaughtered, but they couldn't actually get around to um, butchering it. Not nice, is it? And all these things happened, and apparently all the trucks that came in bringing supplies were ambushed and the, and the goods were distributed. All the trucks which were parked on the freeway because they had no parking because it was like a last minute thing. They all got towed away or burgled or stolen. And in the end, it was a complete disaster. So that's why I'm choosing this, Bull Island or the Soda Pop Festival as my worst festival of all time. I wasn't there obviously at the time I was, what, 18? So um, I could have been there if I wasn't several thousand miles away. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe. Press the notification bell so you get notified. And um, I hope to see you next time. Comment as well. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.